I'm looking forward to meeting your parents tomorrow. I hope you're as excited as I am. It appears that April's parents have gotten us all a reservation at a wine and charcuterie bar. So that's where we'll be heading. That's what I've heard from her. Sounds good. I'm really looking forward to being able to meet everyone in the family tomorrow. This will be my first time meeting April in person as well, so I really can't wait. I'm sorry that things never lined up well enough to allow you to meet with April sooner. Now we are already so close to our marriage, and you'll only be getting your first look at her. But we did only choose to get married a few weeks ago, so there wasn't much time anyway. Even her parents haven't had much time to meet me, and we've only had the opportunity to talk over the phone. It's no problem at all. Our family's always been on our toes waiting for the next thing to happen, and have never really been good at getting things over with until the last minute. And after all the strikeouts before, like that last time, I'd say I'm getting kind of used to having my hopes let down. Right. But I haven't brought any of that up with her family yet. I was thinking that tomorrow would be a good time for that, in person, as they might have a better understanding of us then, and not get too upset about it. Well, as long as everything goes well around that, then I'm fine. I don't want to see my favorite son ending up on the wrong side of things anymore, okay? You've already had your heart broken enough, and it pains me to see it happen over and over again. I don't really want to be in that position anymore, either. I really do think that this time will be alright. And if he didn't already know, April's parents work for the bank. So there should be no problem this time, like we had all those other times. Oh, is that right? Well, that just means they most likely don't struggle too much with money then. I think they all ended up with quite a large amount of wealth in their family. It appears that both her father and brother work for very famous banks. And her mother happened to work for one before she got married to her husband. That sounds about right. Then it doesn't seem like things will turn out the same as they did before. I just got a message from April a second ago. Apparently, her mother's asking to have your number to talk with you. Hmm? Her mother wants my number? We are all supposed to be meeting tomorrow, so I wonder why she'd want to talk with me right now. I believe she has something she'd like to talk with you about before tomorrow, hence her asking to speak with you now. Is that alright? That's fine with me, but I'm trying to find a good reason for why she'd want to talk with me the day before our event and at this time of the evening. Well, it'll be alright. You can go ahead and tell her my phone number. Hello, my name is Helen, and I am April's mother. I assume I'm speaking with Bart's mother, Karen, correct? Hello, and nice to meet you, Helen. Thank you so much for taking good care of my son. It is a bit unfortunate that we all must meet at such late timing as tomorrow, but I am really looking forward to both meeting his fiancée for the first time in person as well as her parents. I'm going to get this off my plate right now. Is it true that you are a single mother to Bart? Excuse me? Well, that is true, but what does that have to do with anything? What ended up happening to your husband? I understand that what I'm asking may be upsetting you a little bit, but it's very important that my family knows the truth. I'm a bit surprised that you are asking such personal questions already, even though we've not formally met in person yet. Well, as for what happened with my ex-husband, the two of us got a divorce. So that's what's led you to this point? Yes, that's correct, but... Then tell me, Karen, why did your son Bart not end up going with his father in the divorce? Helen, can you please tell me first why you're asking such questions at this time? I'm just a bit suspicious of you is all. As far as this world is aware, families of single mother households have always been known to be very poor. <laughs> now tell me, what happened with Bart's father? Does this mean that his father knew of him being poor and that's why he threw the both of you away and ran off? Did you ask for your son to grow up in a poor and unhappy household? That must make you a terrible mother, correct? 
I'm not really sure what you're trying to say to me, but there were a lot of things that led up to the divorce between my ex and I. And since you and I have not yet met in person yet, I don't feel obligated to tell you anything more than I already have about such private matters over the phone. But your son is getting married to my daughter, right? We are going to become family very soon, so I'd really like to know what she's getting herself into. I can understand your concern, but can you please wait until tomorrow? I'm sure that you don't need to know all the details at this exact moment, right? Listen, Karen, I only just learned about Bart living in a single mother's household just yesterday. Okay. And it seems as though even my daughter wasn't made aware of that until only recently. So now, since we will finally be meeting you in person, Bart was kind enough to let my daughter know, and she let me know. Now, I have to say, my family is a family of bankers, all right? And we really hope that our daughter's husband and family will be of that same status in this society. Yet my ears have had the misfortune of hearing that Bart comes from a fatherless and poor home. What? Poor? Helen, I have this slight feeling that you are using that word too freely to describe my family currently. You think so? Well, I'm only using it to describe your current state, right? <laughs> This is why I'm currently talking with my husband about this whole situation. We have to be sure whether it's really okay to let our daughter marry a man like your son. Well, before you begin to judge him based off of myself, take a closer look at him and make that decision. If the both of them look happy together, then that should be good enough to let you guys agree with the marriage, right? My daughter is a very intelligent woman. So, when choosing someone to call her boyfriend, her fiancé, and perhaps someday her husband, she made sure to look into their work and income, but having to hear that his mother is a woman of no wealth that lives day and night having to eat scraps is something none of us expected. Hold on for one second. You think that I am so poor that I need to rely on scraps of food to stay alive? What the heck is that all about? In a household with only a single mother as the parent, the money most often goes to you instead of towards raising your kids, correct? And right now we are worried that with you becoming a part of our family, you will only want more and more money since you cannot obtain it yourself. You'll all be fine. You do not have to worry about such a ridiculous thing. Now, if you continue to say such rude things about me, our meeting tomorrow in person might have to be postponed or canceled. So to avoid such a thing, I'll be going now. I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Is that right? Then I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Hmm. I was also looking forward to this meeting with a lot of energy, but now I am a bit concerned for what's to come next. Where have you run off to, Karen? <laughs> Don't tell me you've already gone home now. Did I really say or do anything that rude to you? Did I end up damaging what little pride you already had or something? Say something rude to me? It wasn't close to such a level. However, I decided to come to this wine bar today to enjoy a meeting with my son's fiancé and her family. Yet, as I walked in to have a seat with you all, you stated that someone of my class shouldn't be in such a fine establishment. And that was your reasoning for not getting me a seat at your table? And then you ended things by asking me to stand, as I do not have the money to take a seat. Now that was actually quite rude of you. Do you think all of that was okay? I just assumed someone of your likes wouldn't mind standing and eating today. <laughs> You should be thankful that you're allowed to come in and enjoy fine wine and fancy food with the rest of the family, right? Had you just stood there and ate your food, we wouldn't have minded having you at our table for talks, hmm. You really have no limits. I had no need to stand there and look like a fool in front of you all. You thought it was acceptable of you to make me look like an idiot and use that as an excuse to laugh at me? You all are really the worst family in this city. Well, you already knew something like this was coming, right? I'm sure it's happened to you plenty of times before, considering you're a single mother with no money that had to raise a child. 
Now I chose not to give you a seat because you don't have the money to afford one, so stand and enjoy the food. I'm going home then. Goodbye forever! I am certain that your actions will soon lead you to becoming very regretful of them, and not just you, but also your husband. Where are you right now, Karen? What was that? I don't really understand why you're asking me that now, of all times. I remember telling you only an hour ago that I was heading home and would most definitely not be coming back, right? Well, my husband just received a call from the bank a few moments ago. You did something, and I want to know what the hell it was. It's so sad that you happened to see me as someone with no wealth, even though that was clearly, and still is clearly, not the case. What? I happen to be the daughter of a millionaire. And with the money I had from my parents, I was able to afford plenty of businesses, which I now run. So, to you, that idea of me being a poor person was really far off the mark, and I'm sure you're surprised to hear that, correct? Hold on, you! What are you talking about? You were once the daughter of a millionaire, and now you run your own businesses? That would be the reason why your husband is currently being contacted by the bank, right? They must have heard that my companies will be pulling all their money out of your husband's bank, and that's why they are trying to get an understanding of the situation from your husband now. What? So that's why they all started to call my husband and everyone on the other end of the line were pissed at him? My husband is all flustered right now and is getting up to head straight to the bank. He told me he had to go because of you pulling out all that money from his bank. Why does my husband have to be involved in this? Did you know that before both you and I met, I had already learned all about your family and what you all do for a living? What? You're... you're talking about my family, right? That's right. Your daughter happens to be a very important person to my son, after all. And so he asked me to take a good look into her and the rest of her family to see what you all are up to. And that's how I learned that your husband and son both work for the banks, and one that I'm a part of. And this was all too easy for me to figure out, considering all my businesses use the banks your husband and son are a part of, and have been with them for a very long time now. All too easy? What is? You already know, right? Getting my revenge. Revenge? Are you talking about for what just happened at the wine bar? Are you that upset over something as basic as me not getting you a seat there? However, both you and your husband happen to be running like chickens with no heads, correct? To a bank as large as the one your husband works for, something like that is a very naughty thing to do to one of the partners there. I'm sure your husband is well aware now that his fate has most likely already been decided within that bank. You mean he'll be fired? You're lying, right? There's no way they'd fire him. He's been working for that bank for over 30 years now and is a big player in getting them new customers and partners. And I'm sure he didn't expect this to be the way things ended for him, right? And this isn't all, Helen. What else is there? Because this was all the fault of him and his wife, the bank will most likely be asking for reparations from him in some way for the major damage to them. <laughs> Ask for reparations from us? Why us? I told you that it's because of your husband and your behavior that I just had my companies pull all their money out of your husband's bank. It's because of the both of you that the bank is now going to be in some seriously hot waters. What? We're the ones at fault for this? I told you how that all has happened just a second ago, and how it links to the both of your actions. Well, it's not like the two of us ever knew that you had that kind of money. Everyone already knows that a single mother household is always without any money and has to live off the scraps that fall from us rich people's hands. Why did you never say anything to me about this sooner? Not even Bart told us anything. There have been a lot of people in Bart's past that have only wanted to marry him for his money. So we've learned to not talk as much about our family and our wealth right off the bat, and instead wait to hear from the other party first. His past fiancé only wanted the money in his family. That's your reason for never telling us? You can't be holding secrets like that from people! Well, that's the only reason for it, so tell me why you're thinking I'm the one that did something wrong here. I'll tell you straight. 
All my son and I are, are two very rich people. And we never thought that you and your husband would find us both to be living in poverty. However, you thought that just because I don't have a husband, right? Well, had you just told me that you were the CEO or something, I would have never had the wrong idea about you being a single mother. Can't you see you're to blame for not ever telling me about yourself? You asked me the other day what happened to cause the divorce, right? Well, we ended up getting that divorce because we are both two very different people. But, as of right now, we both still get to see our son when we want to. And, as of right now, Bart still sees my ex-husband as his father, and his father sees him as his son. Right now, he's just been overseas for some time, operating a very large company. I never told you that before, though, did I? I never heard that from you! It's because of you never telling us all these important details that my husband is going to have his head on the chopping block! Are you not even worried about my family right now? What are you talking about, Helen? We were supposed to meet to talk to one another and discuss our children's marriage. However, you never reserved me a seat. And then you told me the reason for that was because you taught me being a single mother meant that I was poor. And then laughed at me, telling me to stand and eat. <laughs> that was all you, right? That to me seems like you never got rid of your immature middle school behavior. I guess I did say and do all of that to you at some point. But I wasn't doing it to be mean to you or anything. Doing something as pathetic as that while laughing with your family as I stood there humiliated? You all are such children that I could see there was no point to talking with you anymore. All I gained from that meeting was the knowledge to not let my son marry your daughter. And as for the money that I've pulled from your husband's bank, I'm allowed to put it anywhere I please, right? I never meant to make you do something so crazy as that, though! It was all just meant to be a joke! A joke, huh? Let me tell you that when you try to tell a joke, you need to be a bit more lighthearted about it. That means none of that hateful speech and tone should be going into it. Well, you really did it this time, Helen. And now your family is going to pay the price for it dearly. And my son is telling me that he no longer wants anything to do with a family like yours. I believe April and Bart being engaged is no longer a thing. Huh? Bart doesn't want her anymore? He just had to witness your family making fun of me right before his very eyes. So I don't blame him for no longer wanting your daughter. I guess you'll get to have your unemployed daughter back now after all that. And not only are you and her unemployed, but so will your husband be here soon, and maybe even your son. And then all four of you can be a poor and jobless family with no use to our society, am I right? Well, this is all you deserve after how you treated me, so there was no avoiding this. I'm sorry, Karen. I can see now that everything I did to you was wrong. Do you think we can start everything over again and get back to getting to know one another? I know that my misunderstanding is the reason for all this, but... No, thank you. There are no more chances for you now, Helen. All of you jobless lowlives can band together now and try to find a way out of that mess. And tell me, who are the real poor people after today? In the end, Helen, her husband, and April all tried their hardest to apologize to Karen for what they'd done. But Karen ignored all of them as though they were nothing more than ants. And after that, Helen's husband lost his job at the bank and was no longer able to consider himself a wealthy banker. He had tried so hard to plead his case to the owners of the bank, but when they told him he had crossed the line making fun of one of their biggest partners, they had no choice but to get rid of him. They also stated to him that due to all of the money his family actions cost the bank, he would be taken to court and have to pay a reparation to the bank. And when it came to the kids, the marriage between April and Bart was also canceled, and the money that was owed to the bank by her family was paid for with all their savings. When the news of that court case got out regarding said money being paid after the actions of the family, April's brother then lost his job at the bank he worked for, and the reasoning was to prevent future issues that might occur with him. So, as of right now, that family is left with nothing to do but cry and whine about what's happened. And if they ever plan on finding new jobs again, they might want to settle with something outside the world of money, as no bank or financial institution would want to hire them now. I believe all of this was a very good lesson for them, that picking on someone you have no idea about 
can for sure bite you in the butt before you realize it. Everett, this is your number, right? It's Jesse. Long time no see. Huh? Jesse? As in my ex, Jesse? You remember me! I'm so glad. I remember you, but not because I want to. What do you want? I can't believe you messaged me again. You're really gonna pretend to be buddy-buddy after you cheated on me and cleaned out my bank accounts? That was years ago. I'm sorry. But I told you, it was because I was lonely. You were working all the time. You never paid any attention to me. So your first reaction is to bring men over to our house and sleep with them? I don't care how long ago it was. I'll never forgive you for what you did. I understand that. I didn't message you to try to get you to forgive me for what I did. Who did you get my contact info from? That's not important right now. Just listen to me. I want to talk to you about your mom. Huh? I'm not 100% sure, but... I think I found your mom. <laughs> You're kidding, right? You found my mom? That's right. You expect me to believe that? I figured you'd say that. But I just want you to hear me out. And remember, I'm not 100% sure. But I changed jobs. I do nursing care now. And there's the 60-year-old part-timer that I work with sometimes. Her last name is Foster. That's your mom's maiden name, isn't it? Well, yeah, but... See? I remember you telling me that when we were together. And while working with this person, she told me she's divorced. And that she has a son who she hasn't seen since he was a little kid. She even told me her son's name is Everett. Yeah, right. This has got to be a joke. I was surprised too. I debated contacting you again to tell you or not. But I remember you telling me when we were married how much you wanted to see her again. I assumed you still hated me. That's why I hesitated on contacting you. But I thought you should know. I know what I did to you was terrible. I'm not surprised if you still hate me. I'm sorry. When you messaged me just now, I immediately started fighting with you instead of hearing you out. Don't worry about it. I think anyone whose ex did to them what I did to you would react the same way. I'm sorry too. So, what do you want to do? Do you want to meet her? Well, yeah, I think. But I want to see her again. Sorry, this is just so sudden. I need some time to process all this. She left my dad and me when I was in first grade, and nobody knew where she went. If she did that, she probably doesn't want to see me ever again. I understand why you're hesitant. Don't worry. I didn't say anything to Miss Foster about you. Take your time and think about this. When you've decided what you want to do, message me back. Okay? Okay. Thanks for all this. Oh, you don't have to thank me. After what I did to you, you don't have to be grateful for anything I do. I know how bad it was. Listen, you don't have to speak to me ever again if you don't want to. Once you've decided what you want to do, just message me. I won't say anything back. If you decide you want to meet this Miss Foster, I'll tell her about you and give her your contact info. If you decide you don't want to meet her, I won't. It's as simple as that. I'll be waiting for your message. Is this Everett's number? My name is Louise Foster. Jesse gave me your contact info, so I messaged you. Yes, this is Everett. Um, are you really my mom? Everything seems to point to that conclusion. 
all the stuff Jessie told me about you lines up with what I know about my son. At this point, I don't have any proof, so I can't say I'm 100% sure. But your father is Jack, isn't he? I left when you were only seven years old. And your dad worked for McDermott Construction at that time. Yeah, that's right. It's all right. I know it's too late to say this now, but... Everett, I'm sorry. I just didn't know what to do. So I left. You don't have to apologize, Mom. There was a time in my life when I thought I could never forgive you for leaving us. But I'm sure you had your reasons. I'm not a child anymore, so I understand that. I just want to know what happened. A lot of things have happened since then. It's been almost 30 years, hasn't it? I heard that your dad died seven years ago. I'm sorry for not going to his funeral. I didn't keep in touch with anyone, so I had no idea that he even died until long after his funeral. I see. So that's why nobody at the funeral had any idea where you were, either. So, anyway, what have you been doing this whole time? And why did you run away? Is it okay for me to ask? It's not a very interesting story, but... I've been by myself this whole time. And I guess you deserve an explanation as to why I left. So, I'll tell you... I left because Jack was cheating on me. Huh? My dad? He cheated? I'm sorry. I know that's not what you wanted to hear. I know you always looked up to your dad. He was like a hero to you when you were young. But I just couldn't forgive him for what he did. I couldn't bear to look at his face anymore. He broke my heart. At first, I thought about taking you with me when I left, but I didn't think there was any way I could support a child on my own. I wasn't working when I was with your dad. It was a struggle for me just to support myself when I left. I'm really sorry. Mom, it's okay. I had no idea that he had done that. This whole time, I thought that you were to blame. I thought you just didn't want me. That's not true at all. I never stopped thinking about you. I always wanted to see you again. But I knew there was no way I could. And after all this time, I wondered if you even wanted to see me again or not. Of course I did. I still do. I want to see you again. But I just need a little time. To suddenly meet up again after all this time. It's just... I don't know how to put it. Don't worry. I understand what you mean. Let's just keep contacting each other like this for a while. Until I'm ready to meet in person. I want to see you. I do. Everett. You're so kind to give me another chance. You were always a sweet little boy. I'm glad to see things haven't changed after all these years. So, let's do that. Let's keep texting each other for a while. Until you're ready. I want to see you too. Sorry, Mom. I need some time to process this. So let's call it a night for now. I'll message you again later. Sorry. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Take all the time you need. I'll be waiting for you. Everett? You haven't been responding to my messages lately. What's wrong? Do you not want to talk to your mom anymore? What? Everett, thank goodness. I thought maybe you were never going to talk to me again. Were you busy with work? Well, I was busy with a lot of things. I see. Try not to work too hard. 
You've had to put up with enough difficulties in your life already. You sure do know a lot about me. Of course. I'm your mom. So, Everett, I've got something I need to talk to you about. That's why I've been trying to contact you so much these past few days. Oh yeah, I remember you said there was something you wanted to discuss with me. Yeah. It's really difficult for me to say this, but I haven't been feeling well for a while, so I went to the doctor last week to have some tests done. The results came back, and I just found out the other day that they have to do some surgery on me. If I don't, I'll die. I've already been admitted to the hospital. What? You're sick? Yeah. And after just finding my son after all this time. I'm so sorry. And the thing is, I need you to lend me $30,000 for the surgery. You've got a good job and you said you're doing really well, right? I think I'll be able to get a lot of it back through my insurance, but that'll take some time. And I don't know how much they'll cover anyway. Plus, I won't be working the whole time I'm in the hospital recovering, so I'll need the money for my regular bills too. Is there any way you can help me out? I don't think I can do all of this on my own. Is that so? I'm afraid so. So that's how you're gonna come at me. Huh? My mom died last week. I know it's you, Jesse. You can stop with this stupid charade. I know you bought a second cell phone so you could pull this stunt. If you had enough money to do that, you should have just paid off some of your debt with it. Goodbye. Everett? What's going on? I'm not Jesse. I'm your mom. If you're really my mom, then you won't mind answering your phone and talking to me, right? I think I know the answer, but why won't you answer your phone? Even when I asked if I could call and talk to you before, you refused. It's because you know you can't fake my mom's voice, isn't it? Of course it is. That's not it! Your mom really is sick! She just couldn't bring herself to ask you for help. That's why she lent me her phone to talk to you for her. I'm just acting as a go-between for you two for the moment. You're despicable. I told you my real mom died already, didn't I? I got a call from my mom's lawyer last week saying that she died and left some things to me in her will. That's my proof. Where is yours? I've already gone and picked up everything she left to me. I saw her empty house. She still had pictures of me as a child up on her walls. Does this person you claim to be a go-between for have any proof that she's really my mom? Well, I don't know anything about that. I figured she didn't need to prove anything to me if she had already proved it to you. So, you're still trying to keep up this charade? Whatever. This whole time I haven't been responding to your messages. I've been looking into you. You cheated on me, stole all my money, and ran away. And when you finally married another guy, you cheated on him too, didn't you? And that's why he's suing you right now, huh? But not only that, you were hiding a massive debt from him that you said you had from before he married you. <laughs> that's why you figured you'd try to scam me out of even more money, huh? Because you wanted an easy way out of the hole you dug for yourself. How do you know all that? And how dare you stick your nose into my personal business? I hate you! I can say the exact same thing to you. You pretended to be my long-lost mom, and you told me lies about my dad cheating on my mom, all because you were trying to scam money out of your ex-husband. And you only did all of that because you found out I'm doing really well now, and you wanted a piece of it. You're a horrible person through and through. Oh, shut up. Like I care what you think. But you know what? Even I didn't think you were stupid enough to go along with my charade as long as you did. 
You're even more gullible than I had originally thought. You're pathetic. Well, I guess there's no point in me wasting my time talking to you anymore, so... Oh, so you want to act like you've won this, huh? That's fine with me. I guess you don't want me to help you. You know what? I'm doing really well right now. I've got lots of extra money I can throw around. I was thinking that if you were honest with me and admitted to trying to scam me, I might actually help you out. But if that is how you want to be... Huh? Really? Well, the truth is, I really am in some financial trouble right now. I figured that if anyone could help me out, it would be you. I'm sorry for pretending to be your mom. I should have been honest with you in the first place. I mean it. So, will you really help me out? Please? Wait, is it okay if I call you so we can talk about this? No, because I'm not helping you. <laughs> huh? But you said you would. What about my money? You said if I admitted to trying to scam you, you'd help me. Ugh. Jesse, you need to be more careful. It seems you're even more gullible than me. I shouldn't have been surprised that the person who stole all my money five years ago would show up and try again. But honestly, I never saw it coming. It's not even that she betrayed me like that the first time that makes me upset. It's the fact that she came back, and I fell for her lies again. I really am gullible, aren't I? I guess I'm just too trusting of other people. When my mom was alive, I really did want to see her again. I think that's why I wanted to believe Jessie so badly. But last week, when my real mom's lawyer contacted me out of the blue... I was able to get the real story. The timing was unbelievable. That's when I knew my ex had tricked me again. So, I hired a private detective to look into what was going on with her. I found out she really was working in nursing care, but there was no one she worked with with the same last name as my mom. The detective told me all about Jessie cheating on her second husband and being sued for compensation money because of it as well as all the debt she had kept hidden from her new husband. People like that just never seem to learn. After Jessie's attempt to scam me out of more money, I blocked both numbers she had been contacting me on. I know she doesn't have the money to buy a third cell phone, so I'm sure I won't be hearing from her again. I reported her to the police for the scam she tried to pull on me for $30,000. Hopefully, they'll do something about it. I'd love it if she got arrested for doing that to me. I was really shocked that while all this was going on, I was contacted by my real mom's lawyer about her will. If it wasn't for that, I likely wouldn't have found out the truth. At least, not until it was too late. I guess I can thank my mom for that. I wonder if it was just a coincidence, or if it was her looking out for her son one last time.